Okay, at the end of class, we had started to talk about this problem of how to find the distance from a point uh, to a line. Uh, the context had been we had found the equation of line that goes through negative 3, 5 that was perpendicular to this 2x minus 5y equals 7. And then we wanted to use that then to figure out uh, the distance from a point to a line. So if we have any old point down here, and any old line, when we measure the distance from that point to the line, right, there's lots of different ways you can get to that line. We want to go to the line in such a way that we're perpendicular to the line. We're going to the point and we're perpendicular to that line. So that we are crossing at a right angle. And so when we found that equation of the line, which was y equals that perpendicular line, y equals negative 5 halves x minus 5 halves, we were finding the equation of that perpendicular line. Now that I've just drawn a part of that line now. And we want to measure the distance from the point, little white circle there, to the line. Now we don't have a formula for measuring the distance to a line. We only have a formula for measuring the distance between two points. But now that we know the equation of our perpendicular line, the blue line, and we know the equation of the line we're trying to measure to, the white line, we can figure out that point right there. That point is known as the point of intersection. So we can find that point of intersection there inside the red circle by taking our two equations and solving the system of equations. So remember how do we solve a system of equations? Well, there's lots of different ways. We can use substitution. Uh, we can do elimination. In fact, I'm actually going to choose to do elimination here. Now, to do this by elimination, I need to clean up my second equation. And although graphing it makes it easy, it's easy when it's in slope-intercept form. If I want to solve this system of equations by elimination, I'm going to need to clean it up. So the first thing I want to do is get rid of those darn fractions. So I can accomplish that by multiplying by my common denominator. 2y equals negative 5x minus 5. And then put that equation in the proper format by bringing the x over. I have 5x plus 2y equals negative 5. And now I take my two equations. The one I've just found here, and the one I was given, and say, hey, let's find uh, the point where those intersect. In other words, let's solve this system of equations. We bring our equations over. 2x minus 5y equals 7. 5x plus 2y equals negative 5. Now we want to solve by elimination. We'll remember how elimination works. We need to choose a variable to eliminate. I'm going to elect here to eliminate the y's, although you could do it as well by eliminating the x's. So remember to eliminate, I need to make those guys be, have opposite coefficients. So we can accomplish that by multiplying the top equation by 2. That will give me 2 and negative 5 will be negative 10y. Multiply the bottom equation by 5. That will give me positive 10y. And so we follow through now and do that. Multiplying by 2 would give me 4x minus 10y equals 14. Multiplying the second equation by 5 would give me 25x plus 10y 
equals a negative 25. And then we can add our two equations together. 29x equals negative 11. And so solving we get x is a negative 11 29ths. Okay, not the nicest of answers, but hey. Uh, sometimes that happens. In fact, often that happens in real life. Now once you know what one of your variables is, we can then go back, plug that into our equation, try to figure out what the other variable is going to be. So you may want to take a moment and plug that into one of your equations and see what happens. So hopefully you took time to uh, work that out. And what I've done is I happen to have chosen the second equation there, the 5y, 5x plus 2y minus 5. And I plugged in my negative 11 29ths for x. And then that gave me the equation negative 55 29ths plus 2y minus 5, or equals negative 5. I went through and added 55 29ths to both sides. I had to go through the process of getting a common denominator. Finally getting me down to the equation 2y equals negative 90 over 29. So at this point we want to solve for y, so we can divide by 2. Remember though that dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by a half. So on the other side, you can think of it as just multiplying by a half. Leading me finally to y equals a negative 45 over 29. So now I know what y is, and I know what the x-coordinate for my point is. Now that I know my point, we can finally proceed with finding the distance. To that point because remember we found that point so that we can find the distance from the white point to the red circle there the point circle in red we did that so that we could find the distance to the line so now it's a matter of going back to our distance formula okay so I've taken my two points now and rewritten them negative 3 5 negative 11 29 negative 45 29 so I'd like you to take a moment now, pause the video, uh, and see if you can find the distance between those two points using the distance formula. Yeah, it's going to be a little messy because we have to work with fractions, but it's worth uh, taking the time to try and work it out yourself, and then you can catch up with me in a moment. I'm going to it's plus 3, the uh, 39, 87, 87, 29ths, 87, 
negative 145, 145 would be negative 190. Okay, so now I've taken and added up using my distance formula, I get 11 29ths minus a negative 3. Uh, this simplifies to be 76 29ths squared, which is 5,776 over 841. And then negative 45, the difference to the y's, negative 45 over 29 minus 5, which would be negative 190 over 29. When you square that, you get 36,100 over 841. Adding those up, we get 41,876 over 841 and now we just want to approximate that and we get 7.06 7 units from that point to that line now, as one final illustration that our answer uh, is in fact correct, uh, I've drawn the graph of that original equation, 2x minus 5 equals 7. And I'm also plotted the point negative 3, 5. And so we want to measure that perpendicular distance. So we start at our point, and we start measuring down. And again, you want to continue to try to make that line perpendicular as best we can. Looks about pretty close. Now, we can't measure this exactly. I guess we could using the uh, Pythagorean theorem. But it looks like it crosses there at about, well, like we said, uh, negative uh, 11 29ths. <clears throat> I know what you might be thinking here. Uh, what in the world's going with this line here? That's clearly not perpendicular. Actually, it is. Uh, the viewing window that I've set up here is not the same on both sides. And so therefore, since it's not a square window, everything is off kilter a little bit. But that's the point we've actually found. And had I drawn a square window, I really probably should have went back and done that. Um, we're measuring that distance to the blue line there. Okay, so I apologize for the graph being off a little bit again because uh, what we actually did... Uh, what we actually have, again, is it's crossing there at around a negative 11 29ths, right about there, negative 11 29ths, uh, negative 45 29ths. So it's crossing right there. Uh, and that actually should be perpendicular. You can't tell from the graph because the graph, again, is not a rectangular, or not a square window. It's... It's rectangular. I've got a length of uh, looks like 13 on the x-axis and only a length of about 8 on the y-axis, and that's what's really throwing the graph off. Okay, it took a little bit of work, but I did get a graph for you that's a little bit more square, and now we can see that yes, uh, it does appear to be perpendicular, and it is crossing at the point where we indicated. Now, as far as it being a length 7, uh, just hope you can kind of see here, uh, there's a length 5, and you can kind of match that up with our length there. That's about 5, give or take. And so, a little bit further, uh, putting us with a distance of about 7, which is about what we found. 7.06 units. Okay, well, uh, long example. Uh, thank you for taking it out to uh, 
suffer through the whole uh, example here. <clears throat> but this just shows how, you know, a real application question uh, isn't as simple as just doing one or two steps.